So we're going to talk about PPF and security at Google. And the stuff we're going to talk about is why did we introduce Atomics? What are we doing with Atomics? And a, a, a trick that we learned is called Promises. Uh, some more tricks about how do we chunk data and how are we using the BPF ring buffer. The, the interesting bit and the open-ended bit of this presentation is like, what's next for BPF and security auditing? There are some interesting challenges there. And actually, what are we missing for implementing policy enforcement policies? And these are mostly advanced policies uh, and stateful policies. So we're going to talk about why did we add atomics to BPF? And it was primarily a use case driven project with, uh, and we have a couple of interesting notes on our use case. And the use case, the, the broad, broad class of problems the use case boils down to is easily generating UUIDs in parallel in, uh, uh, in, in BPF. And our use case is that some of our events are very large in size. So if, imagine an argv uh, coming from the kernel that is six megabytes. And you have a BPF ring buffer that is also probably four megabytes in size. So single argv could like completely overrun your BPF ring buffer. So the, the blue thing there is the BPF ring buffer. And the red thing is the, is the tail end of the argv that just doesn't fit on the ring buffer. Uh, what we decided to do was that we said that we couldn't chunk this data. Uh, and this is not just arguments, but any sort of large events. We're going to chunk it into smaller pieces. And we, we will use unique IDs to connect these chunks. And essentially, the first event says you're going to receive a bunch of new events from the user space, which the user space is going to wait for a certain amount of time and collect all these events that have a that have this promise ID. And uh, now what this gives us is that if the big event comes, right, and the ring buffer, the user space can start processing these events as soon as the first event is written. It doesn't need for the, need the whole uh, event to be written. Also, you're not limited by the whole six megabyte versus four megabyte challenge here. Uh, what you can also have is that you can have multiple events being emitted from different hooks. For example, that you when 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 a kernel module is loaded, you can have a uh, you can have a, an event emitted with the promise, and further down the syscall, like uh, tracing the kernel, you can emit, emit more events that connect more data to this. So you, and you can build this build this up back in user space. So I, we call this asynchronous communication, and the first header comes from the program, uh, and it has a promise ID. You can store the promise ID in task local storage uh, and further down the hooks. There are some limitations with the task local storage approach here, uh, which we are trying to solve with the lack of availability of task local storage to sleepable programs. There's a patch set out there, and I think Martin has given me interesting feedback. It's just waiting for another iteration. We should get that in as well. The, the next thing is that why do we like the BPF ring buffer? Uh, and, and this is something pretty nice. We, the, the first thing that we, the reason why we like the BPF ring buffer is it, it scales better with respect to the number of CPUs. And what we notice is that it gracefully absorbs the spike on a single CPU. So with a per CPU buffer, when you have a, a spike of events on a single CPU, for example, with executions, one buffer tends to get full. And this is the perf, uh, the per CPU buffer can be interchanged with perf buffer, which is the previous mode of communication from BPF. Uh, that we were using and like one buffer gets full the others remain empty so you have an ineffective use utilization of the space you have when you have a bust of events the other thing this plays really well with is the ordering guarantees uh, and the promise system that we just talked about because the bpf ring buffer gives you better auditing a uh, better ordering guarantees you have a simpler user space logic when you have to construct back these chunks of data that are arriving back from the kernel and users. Another good part is the customized watermark logic, which if you've used perf, uh, you might have noticed that the perf has a, a flag that, or, a, or an option that says watermark, which is primarily based on the fullness of the buffer. So you can say that don't wake me up if I'm more than 50% full. Uh, if I'm less than 50% full, wake me up only after a certain percentage of fullness. Whereas the, the, the logic in BPF ring buffer, you have, you have helpers, and the helpers allow you to check for fullness and other parameters. So you can, you can decide whether you want to wake the user space at this point or not. This is pretty nice. Uh, and the other thing is, 
the isolation or the parallelization is semantic. You can say that I will have multi multiple ring buffers for different types of events so that you can't have one event stop the other event. And, you, and you're not forced by this forced sort of CPU-based parallelization, which sort of plays into the point number one uh, or the first benefit we talked about. So yes, PPF ring buffer is awesome. Thank you for implementing it. Uh, we talk about the ring buffer chunking trick. Uh, essentially, from the uh, uh, for how we chunk arg v is a sim is a simple ex uh, use case extension of the overall chunking trick we talked about last time. The chunking is done on a fixed size based chunk. The verifier likes to know the the, the size in advance, uh, and but you know if you start allocating the maximum maximum possible size that the verifier expects, you get like terrible utilization on the buffer. So you break the large data down into fixed size chunks. But the total number of chunks you might emit for a particular event are, or a particular arg v, you know, those remain variable. And then you can control based on the max arg v size the max events that you max chunks that you might do, uh, emit for a particular uh, sort of event. Uh, this is this is uh, nice. We had some cool discussions uh, in the past about enabling variable size messages uh, on the BPF ring buffer. I, I don't think that is really needed because we were able to overcome with this. But it may be worth discussing if we uh, if we need it in the future. So there were really cool ideas that we have, probably in one of the BPF office hours. And if you folks have these use cases, we could discuss it in the micro conference. Uh, so this is the more interesting and, and open ended part of the discussion that we wanted to bring up here. Uh, uh, so what is next for BPF security auditing and what is actually missing? So we've been using the first time when we pitched the BPF LSM, uh, we, we, we sort of said that you can do secure, uh, auditing and uh, enforcement are two facets of security. And then you should be able to do both using BPF LSM. And as much as we would like, we are, this is not really the, 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 the reality on the ground. And I'll give you some examples. For example, it really works well for process execution. The BPRM committed credit creds hook just is in the right place, has the right documents, uh, and to, to sort of log process executions. So uh, there, there are no issues with that. But for example, with MMAP, uh, the LSM hook is missing the VMA uh, data structure. So what we do use currently is uh, the classic perf. This is not to do with BPF. We are not attaching any, any, any BPF to the perf hook. And the problem here is the classic problem with anything that is not BPF. It is like, it is, it is, you can't customize it. And also it is missing some data. So for example, if I wanted to add the parent process start time, because some of my logic relies on that, I cannot do that without really changing my kernel and the perf tool and, and so on. Uh, another example in this area is the socket operation. And this is the, uh, the, the thing that is missing when the LSM check happens is the is the port. And we try to solve it by some a, a mix of exit, exit hooks, uh, which is fine, but it comes with a maintenance overhead. And actually knowing which FX it use, a hook to use here is the is the real challenge. Like you spend multiple hours with multiple uh, like developer cycles figuring out uh, what actually what FX it you should be using. A similar scenario with module loading. Uh, the when the LSM check happens, you're missing the name of the module, and there's a trace point. To, the, this is a BPF trace point, but again, this trace point is still missing some data. So we have to again do the uh, like dance with FX it hooks and trace points together, chain them together with a promise or with uh, with some uh, with some BPF map. So the, the theme of the problem is that when we typically do enforcement early in the state of the object or versus the operation, an audit typically happens late. So that's the common theme that we've observed with the LSM hooks. Now, there are some solutions. There are some options that we have uh, that, that we, we can do. But the, the current state is that there is no clean and flexible surface that we can attach to. Now. We have the LSM that provides the, the, uh, a small sort of confined surface that we can use. We can also do the same thing with probably FX at hooks or F moderate hooks. But this LSM API, the, it, or, or I, would, I would rather not call it an API, but the LSM surface represents the knowledge that 
the LSM developers have captured. And when the developer looks at these set of hooks, they know that these are the security relevant hooks that I need to look at. Uh, and it's a valid, val these are the valid places where I can enforce some key security decision. So the question that we need to ask ourselves is that do we need a, do we need a special surface for auditing? Uh, and this is to capture the value that has been created by auditing experts and existing auditing frameworks in the kernel. And there are a couple of them that already exist here and there. So this is what it looks like for uh, the LSM before and after. A common BPF pat pattern takes something that was previously configured by a rigid language, needing kernel and user space changes when you want to add new features. Uh, now, now you can do that with a simpler BPF program. You can get that inflexible policy engine out of the way, and then you can maintain your own customized user space code. eBPF e rocks uh, in this area. It's, it's the place where you, you're supposed to use that. And the other point which I would like to mention is that, that I previously alluded to is the, the, the smaller su attachment surface or the selected set of hooks. This also plays into like the, the talk by uh, the uh, Ite, uh, by Ite that about when you want to select a certain number of hooks that you want to get BDF information for a report, you th this is a nice surface or a subset that you can select. It also provides you allows you to write helpers because the places at which these hooks are, they have some certain be they have better guarantees than all tracing. So one option we have here is add new LSM hooks at the places that we just mentioned. Like right? now, these LSM hooks are primarily for bookkeeping, uh, and now there are some hooks in the LSM uh, LSM hook uh, sort of the, the list of LSM hooks that are primarily for bookkeeping. They are for blob or state management. Some hooks are actually introduced very specifically for certain LSMs. Uh, now, the benefit of this approach is we already have BPF probe type LSM. We have the, the mechanisms to attach it. The con or the, the, the discussion that will appear here is that they're not tied to an existing MAC policy. Now, the, now this, is, this, is, this may be tied to a MAC policy in the future based on if you want to take a late decision uh, uh, given the extra information you have. But you need to add, you, it, this, is, this is going to come up and be discussed to death if we go with this. Now, we do have another system in the kernel that is for auditing. And similar to the LSM attachment surface, right, there is the audit API, which has an audit user space. The audit user space has a policy or a config language. The output format is strings. Uh, can we use this audit surface, add the BPF goodness to this, and, and sort of alleviate the inflexibility of the config language and the, uh, and, and the output format? So in theory, yes, we can do that. But when you look at the code, the amount of work that, it, that is required is quite large. The, the audit system has a rich set of auditing points. Uh, the, but the, the way they are structured is, is quite not PPF compatible. So the data comes from this thing called audit context. Uh, this context is again inflexible, so you'll have to change the audit the, the 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 fields. It's a union of large number of basically syscall arguments for these their events, uh, and the functions that it attaches to or the audit callbacks are sort of all inline. So extending BPF would be a considerable effort, like and like essentially a major overhaul of the audit frame. And people may also have config audit turned on or off based on their uh, based on their performance sensitivity. So another option we have is uh, per, use the perf subsystem. Uh, now perf is an interesting mention in this area. I mean, it's called perf, but it really does a lot more. And I think you people are people who use perf are aware of it. And actually, as it turns out, that perf is very nicely suited for this audit use case. The perf has an existing API for the mmap event. Actually, the perf event mmap call in the kernel is exactly in the place where we would like it to be. Uh, perf has some, and another, another interesting event is like changes to kernel text when namespaces are created, fork, exit, and exec events, and also BPF programs on load, loads and unloads. The sad side here is that ftrace uh, C flags are disabled on all of the perf functions. So, like in kernel events, like the, whenever you compile the perf code, 
you need a you need a you need a particular type of C flag, which gives you an extra five bit knob uh, in in the in the code so that F trace can attach to it, which is also used by the PPF tracing mechanisms to attach, and those are currently disabled on Perfunk. I try to dig into this. I try uh, into the patches that have added that probably have added this, and the and there were two sort of reasons that appeared, like a fear around sort of the the recursive sort of you trying to perf the, its own functions, and the other reason that appeared was uh, uh, the the fact that there may be some m count overhead. I think the yeah, the m count overhead in particular can be solved by like there is a there is an event filter that basically exclude certain functions from this mcon profiler uh, framework and we could just make these functions as default in the mcon so perf underscore star as default in the uh, in, in this setting for the for the recursion thing or the uh, uh, we could also limit the number of the number of functions we can attach to here so this is one possibility the other possibility is like make it make it extensible via bpf the thing we talked about the thing we talked about was similar to the audit and the LSM use case, and, and there was already a talk in BPF uh, BP, uh, in the micro conference about extending perf with uh, BPF, and uh, you add a new BPF surface there. Now this has the benefits that the perf uh, the perf events are in the right place; they have the right arguments, uh, but there is some there is some inflexibility here. Do we implement uh, whenever we need to add a new event or a new audit event to the perf API? Do we add the corresponding changes to the perf tools and and stuff? Uh, so th there will be two systems that will need to go hand in hand. It's not necessarily a bad thing because it also gives like uh, gives you nice already pre-existing tooling that you can attach to, but it is something that is worth considering. It's a higher bar for adding a new event in the API. So. I, I'm going to leave this talk more as an open-ended discussion for some of the things we talked about. Uh, so it's going to be a shorter one. Uh, uh, but let me go into, the, before we end this, I'm going to talk about, uh, in short, what is missing for advanced enforcement. And the the stuff that is missing for advanced enforcement, like you want, if, you, if you've ever used SE Linux, what SE Linux does is it sets extended attributes on file system inodes of files, which SE Linux calls security context. And when the uh, when when certain operations happen on the inode, or 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 something that is reading an inode or transferring the security context into another object, they, 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 they this information is read. Now LSM call this uh, security labels, and the main function is that you can persist this policy. You can tie this policy to the object, and you can persist it across reboots uh, easily. Now, the problem is that BPF LSM cannot write or read X actors easily. So we need some helpers there. It's a, it's, I don't think if there's anything difficult to implement. I've not read into what the detailed signature of this helper would be, but at the very minimum, we would need uh, access to like BPF get X adder and BPF set X adder. Uh, I, so I think uh, that's pretty much it from my side. And I would open up like to open it up for discussion on what we could do in some of these topics to make BPF audit a reality. Right, thank you for the presentation. I guess we'll start with John Faster, but he has two questions. Hey, um, I'm back. Um, I, I think the first one was just about, uh, just a question or a statement, I guess, about the chunk size. I just noticed, like in general, they could be interleaved with other chunks. So supposedly you ID them somehow, but this is, I think, minor. Um, yeah. So what I really wanted to understand was like, for the audit, why can't you just use the like, K-Pro hooks that we have and hook any function and probe read all the data you need? I, I missed something. So I think this is this is the developer experience thing, right? Do you, because you know what K-Pro to hook at, right? And, and uh, this is why we didn't see the LSM. People had FMOD red programs all the way. Like they, the people could use them for security as well. But when you have a limited surface, when I know that these are the 100 functions, 100 is actually too large a number. These are the 10 hooks that I can hook at for auditing certain events. There's a, the barrier to entry there is a lot lower. And then you know that these 
because these functions are like uh, from a kernel developer perspective as well, you know that these functions are in like they're not running in an atomic context or an interrupt block or something like that. I can provide some extra helpers there. Whereas in tracing, you have to do this mess, right? You create a BTF set ID for each helper, and then you start adding like uh, allow list for that. I think it's the whole experience of cl clearly clarifying that this is the way you this is where you want to audit. This is these are the events that are available, and and then you keep you keep adding new places. Doesn't that that feels like a user space problem to me though? Like the user space tooling could build a a tool that says these are the audits that you need. Um, here's the BTF for them. I, I'm not sure there's a kernel material. I think I'm I'm not in. So it's it's about right. It's about you want to keep. Do you want to? We, do we want to keep up with the kernel space whenever a new audit hook is added? Right. So let, for example, if the perf people add a new audit hook, do we want to? Do you want this user space to keep up? Right. And I feel that. I feel that this is a this is a chance that we will miss. There is a there's information that is with the audit people. Like they, there's a uh, this might not percolate down to the user, user space. So you need this sort of relation to happen in the association to happen in the kernel space. It's similar to the LSM hooks that we do for LSM because technically, like you could implement all LSM hooks with FMOD programs as well, with some minor sort of yeah. uh, some minor with things about uh, uh, integrity stuff, which is sometimes important, but may not be for all users who are not using integrity because there's some side effects in LSM. Right, which is why we don't do LSM. We just we just talk the K probe and F entry on, on my side. But um I think this is this is the advocate. Okay. As an advanced user, I can spend cycles building this, but as a as somebody who is who who you want to build like a BPF program type for, you want to tell them, hey, this is where you can hook for a map and you get all the information about an MMAP event. So and also we we need to give we need to connect this audit audit like stream of the information that is useful for audit and like connect it to BPF be it via perf or be it via something else uh, is 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 the question that is up for debate but I think I think like how did I certainly like a you, I think the difference between us right here is like you you to me it feels like you're you're talking primarily about a user experience like how does a developer sort of understand what they should hook and on what kernel version, what functions they need to hook. And then from my side, on the kernel developer side, I, I, I sort of and maybe, maybe in your opinion, too casual when I just say, well, read the kernel source and figure it out. Right? Yeah, but this, like is, this, is a, this is a leverage that a lot of the developers who want to use BPF don't have. Right? The BPF community has grown much larger than the people who read kernel code and, and want to develop. So there is a there is a there is a user sort of persona that exists beyond your BPF trace user who who wants to use BPF right so they don't want to use this like uh, BPF trace or like slightly less advanced they're more advanced user space developers but they also don't necessarily want to uh, uh, want to dive deep into the kernel detail and 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 that that is one user persona that I that we see quite often especially in, in the in the area that I work in. And the other part is that how do you connect if when audit people, when audit maintainers, or when perf people, or somebody at some existing audit framework adds a new thing, how do you connect that information uh, back in? Do do we do we tell audit people that you need to document this project everywhere? There is is there some user space project that is going to track every audit change in the kernel? Maybe so, that's an option. So, <laughs> I'll tell a joke, but um, I think you should probably watch the kernel mailing list. I, of, of course, like I just, just try telling this to my security <laughs> analysts, and then they will be like, "Sorry, that's not what I'm going to do." <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I was, I was just half joking, but also half, that that's how you do it today, right? That's that's the point that I was trying to make. I wanted also to emphasize one point that you sort of like didn't emphasize. I think like so the the part about like using the perf subsystem to actually audit a lot of interesting events, right? Like what. What KP was saying about this F trace, uh, can you go back like, to the C flags slide, sure. right? Like that, that's sort of subtle for for someone who didn't run into this problem, and I did run, and it's extremely annoying. Like all the perf core code, right? Like the kernel slash perf uh, directory in the kernel, it essentially disables attaching to any function. So like you cannot do it through K probes, through F entry, nothing. Like it just doesn't generate those first five bytes that are used by the kernel subsystem to attach. Not just BPF, but BPF as well. And uh, 
So I think that that's worth emphasizing because we will probably need to solve this. Like it's impossible to like trace anything about the perf. So like perf event, open files, nothing to do. And and honestly, like some of the, these places that I talked about don't have a function boundary association. So this is one thing I just like didn't mention here. So you don't have a function call in some of these places, especially for socket ops. You you want to be somewhere in the middle of the function because at the exit the there is a data structure that creates created and destroyed between the function that you really want to get your information from. So what do you do in that scenario? I think the I, I the the tracing f exit at f entry points don't really like cover all of these uses. All right. So Song had the question about the task VMA iterator use for auditing and map uh, events, but he's sort of reconsidered. But I think it still might be useful, except that right now task VMA iterator iterates over all VMAs, while in this case you might want to iterate over like once, well, not even it iterate at that point, but like you would want to look up the VMA for specific uh, task ID. And we actually had a discussion about uh, allowing to customize the task VMA. Yeah, so. So yeah, I think that's, I think uh, you use perf to do the map events. Basically, you want uh, to know when a, a VMA is created. Yeah, and well, the task is created right now. It's like to go through whatever like the task, and so maybe there's some combination of these two. Like if you have uh, something VMA triggers and you want to uh, uh, unmap uh, perf event uh, triggers, you can use I'll say a modified version of that uh, of the uh, task VMA iterator to look at it, or maybe you actually want a uh, a hook or something that when you there's a new VMA created, you want to trigger a B, uh, BPF program to to look at it. So I think the I I actually love the task iterator concept for for like, but the way I see where it fits in the whole thing is when when you start a particular sort of auditing agent after certain point in the reboot after a few like certain point in the boot cycle, you want to backfill. These, this information, like what is the memory mappings that exist currently in the system, or like what are the processes and what are their start times, so that I can I can track them better. This sort of falls in the iterator use case. But when you when you want like a point notification of when a new VMA mapping is created, the perf event M map is nice. Now I would really like like if I could just get the perf event M map with the C flags disabled somehow, or like we solve this M count issue. Some of these some of these things will go away. But I think the Andrew alluded to the nice point there. Like you tell them, okay, you can use F trace and FX, right? And then people people are like, okay, I will read the kernel source code. I've read all of them. And this is exactly what happened in my case. They they read the kernel source code. They're like, this is the function that perf calls, perf event time map. This is what I need to do to add the start boot time or the uh, for the for the parent process. Let me do that. Kept failing, kept failing, got frustrated. PPF doesn't work, right? And and then you, you sort of the whole developer experience starts falling through here. And this is why I think we need a dedicated API for those sort of things. So um, how about something like you have a perf event? If we have a, a like say the task VMA iterator, so instead of you just uh, uh, let you specify what is the uh, it will let you specify the task and the starting address you want. So when you get a perf and map to event, if you yeah. just if that's enough, you just do look at it. If more that's not enough, you can use BPF to get the VMA, and you can look at the details with that. I think that that is helpful, like, but it is very, very on this particular use case, right? It is for the MMAP use case. Then you have the kernel text loading, and then you have the PPF program loading and unloading, and you have other things that you would potentially want to audit. So I agree, we might be able to conjure up a solution for the for the VMA MMAP case based on the task VMA iterator. I, I don't see it in my head because it's also Friday evening, but. Uh, I, I think like the the it, it is in, it is possible to build that. But then what about the other? Okay, so I'll I'll pin you when I have a prototype for the helper, and uh, I don't know whether it's going to be good for one use case or it's going to be good for a couple. But 
hopefully uh, we get your feedback uh, to make it, uh, if it's useful, make it correct for you. Thank you. This is awesome. Uh, so Lawrence made a point about the K-probe, that K-probe actually has, uh, well, relatively high overhead. and Some people might not want that. So that was to the question, why not do the K-probes? Though like F entry kind of eliminates that, so I don't know, kind of balances it out. I mean, F entry is nice, and I think chaining, we, the one pattern that solves the other use case is chaining F entry, and then if you can get the information at function boundaries, you can sort of build a larger context either with using the promise subsystem or like embedding data into task local storage. But there are some things that just, like as Raphael was asking, and I, I thought I missed that question, but there are some things that are not available at function boundaries. And then what you right. actually to that point, like you were saying that like we can keep adding like new audit uh, LSMs and all that stuff. Uh, I wonder like if the better or just like alternative, right, uh, would be the bare trace points, like those are trace points that are not exposed uh, to the user space as, you know, like all those files in the trace FS, like with some overhead, and they're just attachable through raw trace point program types. So that might be another option, I guess, but it's still like you, you need to add uh, new stuff to uh, to the kernel. So it's essentially like if you cannot make the perf events work, for example, Right, we can we can add like equivalent raw trace points and like provide all the in kernel data structures and actually with the tracing programs you have like direct memory reads like with all the type information. So with BTF it's actually quite convenient to work with. That would be cool. I was wondering like if, if this is one option that came in the in the past as well. I was wondering if we could somehow tag some trace points as audit worthy and you solve this like attachment surface issue as well. Like you could just say that this is a BPF audit trace point, but at this point, the value add is, if, you, if it is the same program type, the value add is just manually like surface. But, but, but regardless, I would encourage to start the discussion with the PARF subsystem about like this C flex problem. It's a problem, not just for your use case. Um, I have a quick uh, question. KP, can you go to the audit uh, slide? Yes, this, this one? No, uh, oh, sorry. No, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so what's the concern for the major overhaul of audit? I mean, the concern is that we will have to change audit. Like, we will, so the you, you know the when you call an audit function, let's say I want to audit a map, audit a map gets like just the right. FT uh, of the of the of the audit audit log M map is just the FD of the M map thing. Audit, there's an audit mmap, the function I think is called audit mmap fd, uh, if I remember correctly in the kernel. This is a statically inline function. Then this function calls audit context, which is like this huge structure of like a right. fixed. Uh, Alexei, you were saying something? Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm agreeing. It's just yes, but uh, like I think you're thinking about it as a LSM hook to intercept it as early as possible. So more or less like converging everything where like this audit the map, etc. So yeah. what if we just add effectively three hooks to uh, uh, audit log start? And this audit log start is like getting this context, right? So it's creating the context. Uh, this I, I, unique, et cetera. So I mean like dumb it out. Like when the BPF is sort of enabled like LSM, not quite a hook, but yeah. sort of uh, keep all the audit stuff as is and uh, attach BPF to like audit log format. So I, it, I, I like it. I think this is, I didn't consider this. So you're saying that the BPF attachment rather than attaching to all this audit API calls, you yeah. you sort of come to this end of the funnel. One, where... one level lower, yes. Because oh. there, like it's a bit harder to, like it will be a bit harder to combine the states and know where exactly you are. So there may be like the need to get uh, like function IP and the caller IP in some cases because of like static inline and do some conversion from IP to a symbol. But the nice part about going into audit, audit log format, like you will get all the arguments. 
you will see like the the all the audit stuff they will prepare it relatively cheaply like you, and of course like bpf site will just ignore the string that is passed there the format yeah. string but the formats will be there because that's the most valuable part and it's already like prepared by all the audit infra for everything more or less yeah. I think this is a very this is a nice way. I mean, it may not solve all our issues, but it sort of opens up the audit subsystem to the BPF world, and which is what I like. I think very gonna... much. Yes, yes. It's like connecting the two and like replacing the guts of audit, uh, like removing all the SKB allocation and everything, and dummy it into just like abstract BPF specific context that is cheap, and programs will have access to all the arguments, and everything will be so much faster, no memory allocations, and running out of any context. I, I actually like this idea. We should uh, we we'll spend some time prototyping this. It doesn't seem like that much work if you look at the if you record into the audit log yeah. format. So yeah, this is a nice idea. But of course, that's that's uh, not. Uh, one off like what andre said like yeah totally makes sense like you do the perf stuff in parallel and everything else like everything that you mentioned i think worth pursuing <laughs> yeah i'm just i'm just trying to adjust the uh cons for this explosive audit events from like a big issue to like it's probably not that big of a deal that's the only thing i'm trying to say nice yeah i think the what really happens is that you you will have users who will have all so you will come up with all sorts of users right like somebody needs to audit at the syscall boundary so they will use syscall f entry f exit function somebody actually needs to get the same format as the audit logs because of some requirement there are actually some weird requirements that come into this area that we really need the output format that audit has i think this will play very nicely into that and for us it'll be very nice to get the perf event map to work like for me personally like in this area We'll pursue that as well. Daniel? I, uh, I, I also had a question regarding the LSM hooks. I mean, like, uh, like I'm, I haven't looked into it, but I'm not sure, like, for example, when you mentioned the module load, there's a missing name or something like where it just would require an extension. I would assume it's probably not that controversial to just extend it and just to try it out. And for the new LSM hooks, I mean, if they're not like in performance critical uh, places, it's probably worth trying to pursue and maybe like to show the use case, like how you want to use it, like even if it would just be in a BPF self-test or so, but um, at least it would uh, demonstrate the need for it, I would say. And I don't think there's much uh, that people would uh, argue against it, to be honest. OK. Yeah. This is just like sort of not, is this is sort of like resistance or inertia to change the LSM framework. I, we have put ourselves in our head, and maybe this is not really the case. So I think we should also give it a fair shot in some of the Thanks. I would say so, yeah. And I mean, as, Especially given you're using it in production, and you know, like this, it definitely makes sense to uh, further extend it. I mean, mm -hmm. if it can be proved that it's useful and needed, so why, why not? 